Thank you, Billy Joe. Let's give Jesus one more good praise. God, hallelujah. Come on, shout the roof off. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for signs and wonders and miracles in this hour. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Now tell three people I believe in Jesus with signs following. After a message from our brother from Africa, and then Marilyn Hickey gets up here and teaches like that, and then that prophecy that Wally Hickey had, dear Jesus, I'm sitting there, and I can get about three words to rhyme together, and the Holy Ghost like a well was pumping that up out of Wally. That is definitely a gift of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. This afternoon's message inspired me. I was so blessed as Dr. Roberts, Brother Roberts, and then, then when he writes me and thanks me for my donation, he signs it oral. <laughs> that message, I just, I just felt the fire of the Holy Ghost. You know, the Bible says that God's ministers shall be a flame of fire. And there's something about the fire of God. I just believe that when we hear God speak to us, it's like fire shut up inside of our bones. And as I sat over in a few chairs here this afternoon and Oral was ministering, I just lost sight of Oral. And I began to hear the spirit of Jesus Christ encouraging us. I began to hear the Spirit of Jesus Christ speaking to my heart and healing and strengthening, and I believe giving us some food, some strength, some manna from heaven, that we will be able to do all the things that God has called us to do, Korah, Basanda, Asaya, in these last days. God has called His church to be a supernatural church miraculous church, a church that believes so much in their God that signs and wonders and miracles follow him. His ministers shall be a flame of fire. The last several weeks I've been spending extra time in prayer, extra time in the Word, extra time in the presence of God, strengthening my inner man because I've found that when the storms get a little hotter and uh, and our body feels a little weaker when we're weak than we're strong in the Lord. And as I've been meditating upon God's Word, there's a passage of Scripture that's just been standing out and talking to me because we're living in the closing days of time. And soon the Lord Jesus Christ is going to split the heavens. And those that are ready and those that are watching are going to be snatched up like an eagle that comes down and snatches a fish out of the water. And I want to be one of those that's caught away to be with the Lord, but I know we've got some work ahead of us. And the scripture that's just charging my spirit man is when Jesus Christ returns, when the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith on the earth? In the book of Timothy, we're admonished to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. I am never satisfied in my spirit man with wherever I am in God. I'm already, always hungry for more of the Lord, more of His presence. But I have found there is a price to pay for the presence of God in your life. That there's a separation from the distractions of life so that you can hear that still, small voice. I'm hungry to see the signs and the wonders and the miracles confirmed in the name of Jesus. I don't believe personally the gospel will be preached 
to the ends of the earth until the gospel of signs and wonders and miracles is preached. We've had all kinds of gospels. We've had the gospels of the God of the past, that he used to do a lot of things. We've had the gospel of the God of the future, that he's going to do some things someday. But to me, Jesus is God who stepped out, down out of eternity and he stepped into the world where I live and where you live. I love as Brother Robert says that Jesus is God in the now. And that's the gospel that I believe he wants to see preached to the ends of the earth. That God is in the now at the place and the point of your need. If you would open up your Bibles with me to 1 Kings. No, I'm not going to preach 1 Kings 17. Most folks have heard me preach that for the last year. How many of you do get to see our daily television program? I see your hands. Pray, wave them at me. I always wondered what you look like. <laughs> First Kings 18. <laughs> yes, I can read the next chapter. <laughs> First Kings, the 18th chapter. And I believe this fits where we are right now in God's timetable. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab is the king of Israel, he and his wife Jezebel, and they weren't exactly what God would have in their position. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And today we as Holy Ghost tongue-talking, faith-healing, word-speaking, seed-faithing believers, I can just hear old King Ahab, who is supposedly the king of over all the different tribes of Israel, and I see all the different denominations as different tribes. He said to Elijah, Are you that prophet that's been troubling all of Israel? That just kind of fits to me a situation that we're in this hour. Or, Roberts, are you that prophet that's been troubling all of Israel? I am the one. <laughs> Like, yes. And King Ahab said to him, Are you the one that's been troubling, that troubleth Israel? And he answered, He said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, you're the ones that have been troubling Israel. You have forsaken the covenant and the commandments of God. Now, can you imagine? Here's King Ahab. He is the king of all of Israel. Man, he and his wife, they've got every kind of prophet imaginable. They've got hundreds of prophets. And here's one lone prophet who knows whom his God is. And they said, are you the one? He said, I'm not the one. You're the one that's been making a mess of God's church. You're the one that's been stirring up all the trouble. You're the one that's been making the biggest mess that has ever been made. Well, you know, that had to take old King Ahab back a little bit. No, you're the one that's been troubling Israel, for you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed after Balaam, a dead God, a God of things, instead of the one that created all things. Now, therefore, send and gather me all of Israel unto Mount Carmel, that the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which sat and ate at Jezebel's table. Ahab, go get all of your prophets. Go get NBC, CBS, Night Line, Crossfires, Ted Koppel, Larry King. Get them all. Get all of your prophets. Get all the television cables. Get all the cameras. Get all the recorders. Get all of your prophets, all the news reporters, all the newspapers, the Charlotte Observer. Get every one of them and bring them here. 
I hope this isn't on satellite. <laughs> Are y'all listening? <laughs> Go get all of your prophets and bring them down here. Elijah was upset with all the baloney that had been going on. And so Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. All the children of Israel, all the prophets of Ahab and Jezebel, the prophets of Baal, bring them right down here to Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long are you going to be halted between two opinions? How long are you going to be stuck smack dab in the middle? We've got group A. Group A believes that God doesn't do nothing today. Group A believes that God wants you to be poor, that he wants you to be sick, that he's going to teach you through poverty and sickness and disease and fear and lack. Group, group A believes that God used to do things, but he doesn't do anything today. Group A believes that someday over there in the pie in the sky, when we're all dead, God will do some things. How long are you going to be halted between two opinions? Group A doesn't believe God heals, doesn't believe he works miracles. Group A doesn't believe that God baptizes in the Holy Ghost and gives us speaking in tongues. He said, how long, Israel, are you going to be halted between two opinions? And then there's the other opinion, Group B. Group B believes that God wants to heal your sick body. Group B believes that God can raise the dead. Group B believes that God opens blind eyes and unstops deaf ears. Group B believes that God can cause the lame to walk. Group B believes that God wants you to prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. When I read this, it looked like it was today. King Ahab mad at one lone prophet Elijah. And Elijah said, I'm not the one that's making the big mess and troubles up all of Israel and God's people, but you're the one because you have forsaken the commandments of the living God. When the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith on the earth? Are we to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints? I'm reminded of Philip. After it had hands laid upon him, he got something. He got the Holy Ghost in fire. And it says that he went down to Samaria, and there he preached Jesus Christ. And the people gave heed to the things that he said when they heard and saw the miracles that he did. People began to listen when they begin to hear about miracles and when they begin to see the miracles that God does. You see, I don't believe that it's enough just to talk about what we saw. But the people in this hour are ready to see what we're saying us preachers saw. Did you get that? People want to see what we as preachers say we saw. And the only way the people will believe that this God is alive when they begin to see the Holy Ghost do what God sent the Holy Ghost to do and that's to testify that Jesus Christ is alive and raised from the dead and is able to forgive your sins and heal your body. How long are you going to be halted between two opinions? I preached last Sunday morning at my church, the large church, and I preached along these lines. I want to set the record straight. This church, this ministry, this television ministry believes that God wants you to prosper and be in health. If you believe that, then this is a church for you. If you don't believe that, there is a church for you down the street. Get in it and be a good believer of what they believe. If you believe that God heals and delivers in this hour, get in this church and begin to roll up your sleeves and let's contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Hallelujah. 
one of these things. On a third mic, I got so much anointing, I got to have three microphones. It's on you. We need to hear it all. That's fine. It's. Talk a little lower, Bob. <laughs> How many of you are in Group A? How many of you are in Group B? If God be God, let's let him be God. People want to see what we preachers say we saw. They don't want to be. They don't want to be just told. They want us to show them. Elijah, he had a little. He had some anointing on him. And I mean, he was putting them all on the spot. He said, "Now this is it." Y'all been arguing and bickering? Some of you believe God does and he don't anymore. All the things you used to believe, you've turned them into fables. Why, you took Daniel in the lion den and made a little golden book out of it. You took Noah in the ark and made a little golden book out of it. But you don't believe that God can part the Red Sea. You don't believe he can make water come out of a rock. You've turned the word of God into a bunch of fables. He says if you believe that God can, can split the sea, then start believing he can split the sea in your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's the same God. He doesn't need a spigot to make water come out of a rock. He doesn't need a bridge to cross a river. He doesn't need a, he doesn't need a butcher shop to bring down manna and meat from heaven. He doesn't need a door to go into another room. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody, everybody's waiting for the door. There, God, to open the door. When you got Jesus, you got the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. My Lord, have mercy. When I got Jesus, I was looking for the way. But when I received Jesus, I found out he is the way. He doesn't need a doctor to heal your body. He is a healer. God loves doctors. I got a church full of them. But he can heal bodies without doctors. He can heal bodies with doctors. And he can heal, because Luke was a physician. <laughs> How long are you going to be halted between two opinions? We hired a, a cameraman from PTL the other day. He got down here and got to messing around with our staff and some more of our television people, and he got to believe in one other particular fraction that, that says healing and wealth and prosperity is a bunch of baloney of the devil. He got to believe in that. He got to talking to some more of our staff, and my man that heads up our television ministry called up, heard what was happening, and said, pack that young man's bag and send him home. This organization believes that God heals, God saves, God delivers, and God prospers. How long are we going to be halted between two opinions? Now listen to this. Elijah was only one. He was not the majority. He was not representing the 12 tribes of Israel. He was only one among many. 450, 400 prophets of Baal. He wasn't the majority. It's amazing how, the, how many people follow the majority. They, they think the majority is the ones that are always right. But I want you to know something. That does not mean because a bunch of people believe it, the majority is not necessarily always right. Bring all the prophets down here, all those that say we're a bunch of 
weirdos and freaks and flakes and tongue talkers and blabbers and, and uh, speak, of the, speak in tongues of the devil. Bring all of those folks down here never seen God before. Bring them down here to Mount Carmel. We're going to find out once and for all if God is God like he says. Let's find out. Let's find out if this God that old Robert says he believes heals today. And so Elijah just pulled their file. They all showed up. Now listen to this. <laughs> then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain, glory to God, a prophet of the Lord. Thank God or Roberts remains a prophet of God and he didn't stop prophesying and he didn't stop speaking in tongues when it got a little hot. I, even I, remain a prophet of the Lord. And Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let them choose one bullock for themselves and another one for us. Cut them up in pieces. And we're going to offer them up as a sacrifice. Now, prophets of Baal, those of you that don't believe in God, you unbelievers, you skeptics, you doubters, you call on the name of your gods. <laughs> going to give you all day, all afternoon, going to give you plenty of time. You can do whatever you want to do. You can go up on every satellite there is. You call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God that answereth by fire. Man, I read that. The God that answereth by fire. The fire represents the power and the presence of Almighty God. Saul struck them blind by that bright light, the fire of God. Moses saw a burning bush and changed his entire life. The fire and the presence and the power of God. Now Elijah's prophesying. He's speaking that begatting word. See, everything starts first with the word prophesied, that spoken word. When you hear God speak to you, faith comes. Many people got a lot of knowledge in their head, logos, and that's good. That's important. But faith comes, cometh when you hear God speak to you. And that brings fire. That when, when you hear God speak to you, have you ever noticed it? A stirring gets inside of you. That's faith. That's that same creative force that brought the worlds and is continuing to bring the ages and is continuing to bring this night into existence. I will call on my God. I will call on the name of the Lord. And he said, the God that answereth by fire. Man. I believe God wants every preacher in this auditorium to get that kind of bold faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People are tired of hearing what we say we saw. They want to see what we say we saw. We had a little woman drive all the way from South Bend, Indiana. Watch this on Brother Summerall's television station. Totally blind, sunglasses on, and a white cane in her husband. They were a black couple, 60-something years old. We had just had a high school graduation at our church. Real anointed kind of service. And I look up, and here comes this woman and with her husband. She's got that white cane, tick, 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 tick. Black sunglasses coming down the aisle. It was obvious what was wrong with her. She comes up to me, and they stands in front of me, and, and, and they tell her that I'm standing there. And she says, Brother Tilton, I listen to you on television. And I told my husband if he'd drive me down to that Dallas, Texas, where all them miracles are happening, that I believe if you prayed, Jesus would heal me. Amen. She was writing her own ticket. She was prophesying. She was speaking the word of faith. You could tell what was in her heart because she believed if the prayer of faith was prayed to the Lord God, Jehovah, Jireh, and he would heal her. Few people standing around. 
TV cameras weren't on. <laughs> Simple prayer of faith. Took her sunglasses off, rubbed on her eyes for a few moments, waiting for that miracle moment when you know that you know something's happening. I wasn't exactly that excited about it. You know? But I just got this thing contending for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And if we don't pray, we'll never know what God will do. I prayed my best prayer. <laughs> you know, Oral, I usually pray also my best prayer the last person in line. <laughs> God opened that woman's eyes. She began to cry. She began to praise God. She began to rejoice. Because God answereth by fire. What does that mean? God answers by signs and wonders and miracles. Philip went down to Samaria and they listened to what he had to say and believed, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. It's that same hour we're living in today. Jesus was confirming the word and miracles were happening. And it says, the Pharisees and the chief priest of that day got together with a, a special council meeting. And they began to talk and they said, this Jesus, if he keeps this up and all these miracles happening, everybody is going to believe what he says. He wasn't the majority but he was a minority who had the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost in his life. Yeah. They said if he keeps this up, everybody will believe what he says. And you know what else they said? This is the religious leaders of the day. They said if he keeps this up, we will lose our place. We will lose our position. Now, can you imagine? How would you like to have a pastor, a priest, a rabbi that's more interested in his position and his pension program than getting people healed and helped? That's basically what they were saying. We're more concerned and worried about our job than we are getting the sheep healed, getting them clothed, getting them rescued, and set free from the powers of the devil. God have mercy on us. God have mercy if we're not sold out. God have mercy if we're concerned about losing our house and losing our friends. God have mercy if we're concerned about our, 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 our cars and our clothes. God have mercy if we've not put everything on the altar so we cannot be afraid of the devil. When you're dead, it's amazing how bold and wild you can get because you've got nothing to lose. A local television station in Dallas a couple of weeks ago, three days they advertised they were going to do this great thing on the local evangelist. And obviously I, I was praying that it wouldn't be me. I just assumed it'd be Brother Copeland. But that was the first one that they ran out of the chute. They really did a good job. Did you see that, Ken? They really did a good job. They did our whole intro. The signs, the wonders, and the miracles holding the canes up. And then they came to the part where I was having people lay their hands on the television screen <laughs> and me praying. And then they did the part about me receiving vows, making vows to God and believing that he'll help you. Elijah decreed his prayer. We're going to pray to the Lord God that answered. Not a God that might answer. Not a God that we hope he answers. No. But the God that it's answers. Alive. Alive. The God that can make wine without grapes. The God that can cook bread without a bakery. The God that air conditioned their houses and their, and their tent, a fire by night and a cloud by day, central air and heating without electric bills. That God that kept their shoes from wearing out without a shoe shop. That God that kept their clothes from wearing out without Saks Fifth Avenue. And that is
is the God that I serve. And that's the God that Elijah serves. The God that is alive. And Jesus is God in the now. And they were going to pray. And they're going to find out whose God is really God. I think it's time we found out if this God we talk about is alive. I think it's time we found out that the blind can still see and the deaf can still hear and the lame can still walk. Woman came up from the Rio Grande Valley of Texas in a wheelchair the other night. Overweight because she had doubled her size because of phlebitis and rheumatoid arthritis. She was in miserable shape in a wheelchair. She had been in that thing for a couple of years. You know, she'd get out a little bit, but she had to stay in the wheelchair. She didn't know much, but someone who had heard and seen the miracles called her up on a phone and said, you need to come. And she began to hear that God is the same today. Today! I'm telling you, I got to reading about John the Baptist and how in his later on in his years, he, he got a little confused yeah. on if Jesus was the one or should we look for another. I can't imagine that, but I can't imagine someone that had the fire of God in their lives preaching repentance, a prophet of God eating locusts and wild honey would get to a place years down the line that he wasn't sure if Jesus was the one or should we look for another. That doesn't happen today, does it? And John the Baptist, John the, I said this on TV, John the Baptist <laughs> sent his disciples to Jesus and said, are you the one? It's amazing I'm still on PTL. And said, are you the one or should we look for it, it is a miracle that I'm on PTL. God have mercy the mess if I got taken off. And uh, Jesus said, the God I serve answereth by fire. Jesus, he said, Jesus said, go tell John. Yes, I'm the one, and this is so many. This is my translation. Yes, and this is how you tell John that I'm the Jesus and I'm preaching what I'm supposed to be preaching. Because there's many gospels of Jesus supposedly being preached today, but the way of finding out if the right Jesus is being preached is the way that Jesus answered the question. Yes, I am Jesus, the Son of the living God, because you go tell John the blind see, the deaf hear, and the lame walk. Jesus that I serve. Is that the Jesus you serve? Well, shout about it. I choose you, O oh God, the God that answered by fire, the God that answered, the God that answered. the message. I'm not through preaching yet. Sit down. Huh? Are you telling me to stop or telling me to go? Go. Preach. You call on your God. Now call on my God. When you know who he is, and what he's got, you know what you got at your disposal. A doorman at a hotel in New York a few nights ago, I was talking to him before we went to a meeting to preach. He asked me if, if uh, he, he'd seen me on television in New York City. We're on every, every night there in New York City, which is a miracle every night in New York City. <laughs> and I said, are you a Christian? He said, I'm a Catholic. I said, Catholics can be Christians. <laughs> I was a Baptist, though, and I wasn't a Christian. Baptists can be Christians. Some of them are not Christians. And out of my mouth came these words. Being a Christian 
is accepting Jesus Christ. Accepting Jesus Christ is accepting what you can't do. Amen. But what he can do. Amen. Many people have yet to accept what they can't do. They're still trying to do it. I don't know about you, but I'm still continuing to accept Jesus Christ. I'm still continuing to accept a, what I personally cannot do, but I'm accepting what I can do through Jesus Christ whom strengtheneth me. And then Elijah said, go get, go pray. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. They beat themselves. They worked up a good sweat. And then Elijah said in the verse 37 of Kings 18, Hear me, O Lord, hear me. He's prophesying. You're the God that answereth by fire. He's speaking the word of faith. He's speaking that begatting word. I used to not like to read the begats of the Bible until I got a revelation on begatting. I love everything in the Bible. <laughs> hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. And then the fire of the Lord fell. The God that answereth with signs and wonders and miracles. Elijah wasn't afraid to put his faith and put his God on the spot. The fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering sacrifices. The wood, the stones, the dust licked up the water that was in the trench. See, he still loves to receive offerings. You give a quality sacrificial offering unto God, like Abel did, because he did it in faith, God accepted it and bore him witness. Didn't accept Cain's because Cain didn't do his in faith. You got to give God something that moves your faith. And when you do, God will come down from heaven and he will answer you and receive your offering. And then all the people, when all the people Saw. Saw. That's what attracts the multitudes to this ministry. That's what attracted the multitudes to that old gospel canvas tent cathedral. I love to go through that adventure in the faith. And I love to listen to those testimonies. And I love to hear, Oral, when you made that commercial years ago, America, I'm coming. You'll find me where the sick are. You'll find me where people are hurting. You'll find me at the crossroads of your cities. But I heard a voice louder than orals through that part in the adventures of faith. I heard Jesus saying, saints of God that have been persecuted because of righteousness. Saints of God remnant that's here that's held on to the bloodstained banner that Jesus Christ has resurrected and he's God in the now. Saints, I'm coming. I'm coming because right after God came and received the offering and consumed the sacrifice, Elijah went and destroyed all the prophets of Baal. Destroyed them! And then he told Ahab, Ahab, you better get going, buddy. You better take off or running because the people turned their heart back toward the true and the living God. And Ahab took off or running. Then Elijah went on up to the mountain and he began to pray because the curse and the famine had been broken because the people had turned their eyes back toward God. There was a drought in the land. Three some odd years had not rained. But when Elijah began to pray, and this is prophetic, when he began to pray, he sent his servant wasn't the first time the servant came back. Wasn't that second time that he had sent him forth and said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. It wasn't 1982. It wasn't in 83. We thought it was 84. 
the seventh time, he came back. And he said, Elijah, I see a small cloud, insignificant, doesn't look like much. Just something, just a small group of believers coming out of every tribe in America. A remnant of born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking believers that are not halted between two opinions. But they've made the decision. And Benahosa, you said the decision. They made the decision that God is the God that answers. He said, I see a small cloud, a small one. Here's the key. Listen to this. If you've got ears to hear. Because faith comes when you start listening. Faith comes when you start hearing. That God that answers by fire, it, gets, it becomes fire down on the inside of you. And when it becomes fire on the inside of you, glory to God, all you need is a street corner. All you need is some place to stand up. All you need is some wood to burn. All you need is some devils to cast out. All you need is a few sick people to heal. All you need to do is begin to preach Jesus Christ, and the multitudes will begin to take heed to the things they hear and see. And here's the key. Listen closely. Because I've been looking for that cloud out of heaven. And I believe a healing hand comes down out of heaven. But it says that that cloud was coming up out of the sea. And they have a typhoon. That water comes from up out of the sea. The Spirit of God begins to draw the Holy Ghost deep, calling unto deep. The Spirit of God begins to call to the Spirit of God in the sea of humanity. The Spirit of God begins to out of His Spirit. The Spirit of God begins to draw us up. The Spirit of God begins to draw out of the multitudes. The Spirit of God begins to draw out of the tribes of Israel. The Spirit of God begins to draw up, out of the sea. A hand, a small hand, a cloud. But that cloud that came up out of the sea, it was an Oral Roberts cloud. It was a Catherine Kuhlman cloud. It was a Jack Cole cloud. It was an Amy Simple McPherson cloud. But in these last days, there is a cloud for it's coming up out of the sea of God's born-again, spirit-filled believers that are no longer halted between two opinions. But they believe that their God is the God that answers by fire, signs and wonders and miracles. When that servant came, Richard, because you see, Elijah has to have his word from God also. God can speak through angels. He can speak through situations. He can speak, speak through donkeys. I tell you, God can speak. The key is to be listening. Because when you hear God speak to you, there's a fire there. There's a creative faith there. And if you'll rise up and act on that fire, that faith that's birthed in your being, Elijah heard his word, just like the centurion. The centurion said to Jesus, All I need, it's a word. Just a word. All I need is one word from Jesus' lips. And my servant will be healed. He had a revelation on the begatting word. He had a revelation on the God that answereth by signs and wonders and miracles. I like to call it centurion faith. That's where all you need is a rhema word, an alive word from God. And when Elijah got his word, Larry Lee got his word, got a word from heaven, go to Rockwall, Texas, and there I'll build a church. Bob Tilton in 1976 got a word, and that word was like fire shut up inside my Bones. And when Elijah, and I don't always practice in trying to say your name right, Benson Idahosa, when Benson Idahosa got his word, he went back to Nigeria on fire. 
He was the God. God in him was the God that answered by fire. And he's been a Holy Ghost whirlwind of fire ever since he got his word. And Elijah got his word. And when he did, he took off running. Kenneth Copeland years ago, <laughs> don't know how many years ago, took off running a little few days before me, got his word. Shut up listening to them tapes. The fire got like a dynamo began to burn on the inside of him until that little old garage exploded and doors couldn't hold back the Holy Ghost inside that garage burned up all them tape recorders. <laughs> Bill Basansky died and his mother believed John 3 16 that was her word shall not die shall not perish but shall live and he was raised from the dead and unthawed from that river of ice that he broke through and froze she got her word Amen. the little uh, the little widow that was suffering from a bleeding disorder she began to hear the word about Jesus she had spent all she had she rather grew worse maybe you've spent all your money and haven't improved nothing and everything keeps getting worse one day she heard Jesus. Amen. One day she heard her word. And she went to where that living word was alive. Amen. You got to go where Jesus is moving, folks. Hallelujah. Impotent man, 38 years at the pool of Bethesda, laying there. Everybody getting ahead of him. Maybe you've been in a particular case for 38 years and it looks like everybody's getting ahead of you and every time God starts moving, it looks like you, you're the last one to get in and you miss out on all the blessings. But one day Jesus showed up at the pool of Bethesda where that man was laying. Do you want to get up? Do you want to walk? Maybe you're not physically lame. Maybe you're mentally lame. Maybe you're spiritually lame. But Jesus spoke the word, and that man heard Jesus speak. And when you hear Jesus, I heard Jesus say to this little old drug addict, terrible marriage, 19 years ago, so confused, so tormented by devils, had a house full of ghosts opening and shutting doors. And I heard the voice of Jesus speak through his word through some kids that came witnessing. And Jesus spoke to me and he said, I've called you as a fisher of men. I've called you as a minister of my gospel. I didn't even know what it meant. But when you hear Jesus speak to you, you'll find out what it means when you get up and get to running. And Elijah, when he got his word, he got up and he took off a running. The impotent man, when he got his word, because he that believeth hath, when he believed what Jesus said, he jumped up and he took off a running. The little woman bowed over for many years when Jesus, and it says that she could in no wise lift herself up. Maybe you have a hard time lifting yourself up. Maybe there's no one to put you in the pool of water. Maybe you've got no one to help you. Maybe, oh, I feel this. Maybe you've got no one to lift you up. Maybe you've spent all your money. I know what it is to run out of money and go in the red a half a million a month for nine months behind in bills, speaking the word, confessing, doing everything I knew to do and everything I could find out that anybody else knew. I know what it is to come to the end But when you can't, and it finally dawns on you, then you can. He's here. I want the organist on the organ. We've had the most hellacious attack the body of Christ has ever had outside of Jesus Christ. And I'm not sure he got this much bad publicity. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. The only persons they don't talk about are those that are not doing nothing. And until we're doing more than those that are being talked about, I don't think we should talk about them. That God that opens prison doors 
that God that told Peter had to pay his tax bills supernaturally by going fishing and getting money out of a fish's mouth which just goes against the brain. <laughs> but Peter heard Jesus say, go fishing and you'll pay your bills. <laughs> he told Elijah to go down to Zarephath and a woman would feed him there and he got there. She wasn't no rich widow. She was poor and about to die. But Elijah knew his God, the God that answered the fire and he knew he had to prophesy her into the blessings and abundance of God. You've got to speak. The word only. I'm not talking about idle words of fables. I'm talking about contending for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. I'm talking about when the Son of Man returns to the earth, is he going to find faith in your life? How long halt between two opinions? Believe in what your eyes see, believe in what your ears hear, believe in more in what you feel instead of what the Word of God has to say? Let's base our faith upon God whom we cannot see. Because when you trust in God you cannot see, you can do the things you thought you couldn't do. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I appreciate this five minutes from Billy Joe tonight.